<laughs> so thank you, Alice, for having me. I'm so excited to be here and talk to everyone tonight. I will, am the resident massage therapist tonight. So tonight we're gonna to talk about tired, old and achy, a massage therapist, therapist blueprint for self-care. Have you ever felt stressed in a situation? Have you ever felt like you were anxious or angry or overwhelmed or frustrated? These symptoms lead to physical symptoms which can cause aches and pains, exhaustion, muscle tension, or even digestive issues. So I know for me, when I'm stressed, it immediately goes to my neck. I can just feel the tension in my neck start up. And that's how I know that I need to implement some of the arsenals in my self-care plan. So in the chat, if anybody wants to talk about how does stress make you feel? Are there any physical symptoms that you have when you're stressed? Do you get a stomach ache maybe? Or do you get a headache maybe? So there are lots of physical symptoms that happen when stress arises. And you have to remember that your body senses stress first and respond with a symptom and your brain responds second, okay? So stress is any situation that drains your physical and your emotional energy. And long-term chronic stress causes wear and tear on your body that can lead to disease and discomfort. So what is self-care? Self-care is a deliberate choice that you make to maintain your own health and wellness. This includes regularly checking in with your mind and your body, identifying any unmet needs, and nurturing your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well being on an ongoing basis. So, I always say that you need five outlets for your stress. And I like to do a breathing exercise that I can go to immediately because deep breathing calms your anxiety. It improves sleep quality. It also improves concentration, focus, and memory. It can reduce inflammation and improve oxygen circulation for glowing skin. So the breathing exercise that I'd like to introduce to you tonight is called the 478 breathing exercise. It is a method pioneered by Harvard trained Dr. Andrew Weil. This method is described as a natural tranquilizer for the nervous system, helping to reduce tension and allowing the body to relax. I just want to look at the chat. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay. So the 478 method is your natural tranquilizer. It helps reduce tension and allowing the body to re relax. So the exercise starts with the count of breathing in to four, one, two, three, four, holding for seven and releasing audibly and forcefully with a count of eight. So we're gonna try that tonight. So I want you to get comfortable where you are, spine straight, and I want you to pay attention to your own breathing. If you like, you can close your eyes and let's help reduce tension. So here we go. So we're gonna breathe in four and we're gonna hold for seven and then forcibly let out for eight. Okay, let's do it again. 
So breathe in, one, two, three, four. Hold for seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let out for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's do it again. Breathe in to a count of four, two, three, four. Hold for a count of seven, four, five, six, seven, and forcibly let out to a count of eight. That is the four, seven, eight breathing exercise. It's a tool in your self-care plan, again, that you can use anytime. It, whether you're in the car, whether you're at a meeting, whether you're in line at the grocery store, it's a, a very valuable tool. So by establishing a self-care regimen early on, you can prevent the onset of discomfort or disease. So you really don't have to feel tired, old, or achy. So again, my name is Crystal Craighead. I'm a licensed massage therapist and Reiki master. And my specialty is helping busy people balance their demanding lifestyles with a relaxing therapeutic massage. I do this with varying techniques and from soft sheets to aromatherapy to hot towels. And I personalize your experience to fit your own needs. I was introduced to massage because I worked in corporate America and I started having headaches. And my doctor suggested that it was a tension headache. So he told me to go get massage. Okay. So I went to go get massage and I started going every week. And I found that I really liked it. And not only did I like it, my symptoms, my stress was relieved. Um, I was, a, when I had headaches, all I could do was go to work and then come home and go to sleep. They were very debilitating and very painful. So when I was introduced to massage, it really helped reduce my muscle tension. It improved my circulation and it reduced my stress hormones and it improved my overall mood. So on one end with this headache, I was in so much pain and I couldn't do anything. And then just going to get massaged on a weekly basis, it really changed my life. So I felt so amazing that I decided to go to massage school, to Potomac Massage Training Institute in, in Mar Silver Spring, Maryland. And that's where I learned all the benefits of massage. It's not just, you know, coming in and having a rub down. We actually have to learn how your anatomy works, how the kinesiology works, and put it into a package and align that with the client's needs. So it really is uh, a strategic um, education that allows people to relax. So I always say as a massage therapist, I've learned over the years that everyone needs at least five outlets for your stress, at least five, minimum five for your outlet. Putting yourself first in a culture that promotes burnout and fatigue and frustration is very challenging. So I want you to consider rewarding yourself and protecting your sanity with a self-care blueprint that supports your needs in a realistic and reasonable fashion. So again, what is self-care? <clears throat> Excuse me, self-care is a deliberate choice a person makes to maintain their own health and wellness. This includes regularly checking in with your mind and your body identifying unmet needs, which is very important. Identify unmet needs. 
is that that's something we don't do every day. And that's important when you're trying to devise a self-care plan. So, and then nurturing your physical, emotional, spiritual, and well-being. Not just today, but it's something you need to do every day. So again, remember, stress is any situation that drains your physical and emotional energy. And long-term stress and the continued activation of the stress re response causes wear and tear on your body. And wear and tear is equal to discomfort and eventually disease. Because research says, is now saying that cancer doesn't start in two years or three years or four years, it starts 10 years, it starts 20 years out. So having a self-care plan where you can meet your unmet needs is critically important. Because stress can lead to emotional and mental symptoms like anxiety, depression, panic attacks, anger, irritability or restlessness. But people really don't associate these as something that massage can help them with. Massage can really help you not only quiet your mind, quiet your breathing, but they can also connect you with physical touch, which in a lot of a lot of times as we especially as we age we don't get physical touch like we used to do when we were kids. So often people with chronic stress try to manage with unhealthy behaviors, which I'm sure we all do. Maybe drinking too much or too often Sometimes it's gambling, sometimes it's overeating or developing an eating disorder. And sometimes it's participating in compulsive sex, shopping or internet browsing. So we have to not only identify our stress, but we have to manage it in a healthy way. So making sure we recharge our internal battery and don't let ourselves run on empty. That is so important because if we don't pour into ourselves, we can't pour into others. And pouring, yourself, pouring into yourself is something that you should do daily. So again, consider checking in with yourself, scanning your body for emotions, for anything that feels stuck or out of sync. So what does self-care look like? So there are many types of self-care. There's physical, emotional, social, spiritual, personal, spatial, financial, and workplace types of self-care. So physical, you know, that's stretching or some kind of exercise, nutrition or yoga, for example. Emotional is learning coping skills or even entering into therapy or journaling. Uh, social is having a support system, meeting up with friends. And spiritual is definitely a good one. It's time alone, it's prayer, it's meditation, it's spending time out in nature. Because research says for every, if we work an eight hour day in a room with a computer, we need to spend at least an hour outside every day just to connect with nature and relax ourselves that way. So other types of self-care is personal self-care, which you can have your hobbies or your creativity. There's spatial self-care, safety and being in a healthy environment. There's financial, there's budgeting and paying bills and financial boundaries and even work type self-care, which with time management and work boundaries, and especially taking breaks. Now that we're working from home, a lot of my clients report 
that, you know, of course they do their eight hour day and then they go to dinner. After dinner, they go back to work because work is at home now. So you need breaks and you need boundaries. You can't work 12 hour days and, and not practice self-care. You have to practice self-care on a daily basis in order to get good at it. So my top outlets for stress, or like I, we did earlier, was the breathing exercise. I love that because I can do that at any time, anywhere, and it's easy and it's, it reduces my anxiety immediately. Number two, I get bi-weekly massages because as, like I said, stress builds up in your body and you don't even know it's there. I always say you never know what you need until you get on the massage table because your body hides the stress so well until you approach a tipping point. And the tipping point is your body communicating to you that something needs attention. However, we're trained to ignore that. Oh, I have a pain in my neck or a pain in my back. So I'll just take some Advil and be done with it. But until that stress is taken care of, it's going to build up in your body and it's going to get worse and it's going to approach the tipping point and go over the tipping point. And once you come to see me, there may not be a way to get you back to where you were. So self-care is very important, especially on a daily basis. So number three is daily movement. I always go for a walk and spend time outside. Number four is spiritual practice. That is connecting with something higher than myself. When I connect with my spirit self, I always feel grounded, centered and aligned and I feel so much better. And number five is listening to music. Listening to music always boosts my mood and it makes me feel good. So does anybody have, wanna list or tell me about your outlets for stress? Anybody? If not, oh, Christina, do you wanna go? Oh, I'll say. Um, so I play with my dogs like further toys around and, and they like it they get exercise and and that's fun i mean it helps me relax and so that's one of the things that i do but you also like to cook too don't you oh i do yes Is that baking baking cooking um messing with my plants all that kind of stuff so all of that helps me to relax, as well as listening to music or sometimes just watching a movie. Okay, that's a that's a that's a good one. Okay, so Angela has her hand up. So what do I need to do? Do I click on it or? Oh, just tell her to unmute herself. <laughs> unmute unmute yourself, yourself, babe. Then she can lower her hand. <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear you. Uh, can I unmute her? You should be able to as the host. Okay, where did she go? I'm sorry. Uh, where did she go? Mm. Oops. Good question. It's at the top. Because it says I can ask her to unmute or I'm Oh, oh okay. No worries, no worries. Angela says she's having difficult technical difficulties. So she said that aromatherapy is her go-to. 
So that's what I use in my practice too, aromatherapy, because especially the lavender is calming, the orange is brightening. And again, your five senses respond first to uh, aromatherapy. So it's really a bonus in my practice. Okay, I don't see anyone else. Okay. I'll go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll say. Um... Some of my go-tos, I love listening to music and just dancing around, <laughs> um, especially while I'm cooking. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do that. Um, I love that. I love going for a bike ride. That's something I've been doing a lot more of. Okay. Um, going for bike rides, especially out on the trails and stuff. So okay. in nature. Nice. Um, going for walks as well. And then one of my guilty pleasures is watching Hallmark movies. So that always, <laughs> that always when I need a down day, because <laughs> right. there's just so much going on, that's always something that I turn to. So things that's like- awesome. Why are those Hallmark movies, they always pull at your <laughs> heartstrings. They do, and they sucker you in. And sometimes exactly. you're gonna be watching one after another, after another, it's awesome. <laughs> <Every It's so laughs> <good. time. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. The uh, one of the things that that I wanted to just emphasize because you've got it on on your list, the spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. I know I've, I've I've this has happened to me over and over and over again. I might wake up and say, "Oh my God," and I go over my to do list in my head. And I don't do my spiritual practices. My mm. day is never as efficient as when I do do my spiritual practices because right. I've got eight of them. And uh, I usually allot a minimum of a half an hour to a maximum of an hour. And those spiritual practices just, they, they just take priority. It's, uh, it, it, if, it, it doesn't matter how many ways I can convince myself that I have to do something and I have no time for it. It right. doesn't work. Doesn't work. So anyway. Yeah, yeah I have a, a little sidebar story is that uh, I have a patio and I have a bunch of plants on them on the patio, but I don't like to repot the plants in the daytime. I do it at night or at dusk. Um, so you really can't see what's going on. <laughs> so, um, so I had some dirt that was left on the patio and I saw that the next day and I said, oh, you know what, I gotta clean that up. So, but every morning I go outside and plant my feet on the ground and I do my Reiki principles, I Reiki myself. And the other day when I went outside to do that, the our condo cleaning lady was outside and she asked, cause we're friendly with each other. And she asked me if she could have one of my empty pots. She wanted to use it to plant one of her flowers. And I said, sure, you can have it. And she said, thank you. I'm gonna clean your patio for you. I was like, what? <laughs> I was supposed to do it, but the angel sent her to do it. I mean, she was more efficient. She moved everything off the patio. And I'm like, you don't have to do all this. She's like, no, I'm gonna do it. She moved the table, the chairs, swept everything down. I was so grateful to the universe for doing this because I really didn't have time to do it. But no, you're, you're right, Alice. The, spirit, the more and more I do the spiritual practice, the more I learn I, I can't live without it. And mm -hmm. how did I live without it for so long? Mm -hmm. You know, so thank you so much. So making self-care a priority is important. People make time for what's important. Consider your physical and emotional well-being by prioritizing your self-care journey. Developing daily habits that will improve your overall health is a game changer and you will feel better over the long term. Unfortunately, many people view self-care as a luxury than a priority. Consequently, they're left feeling overwhelmed, tired, 
and ill-equipped to handle life's inevitable challenges. So I'm gonna go over some self-care myths. So some say self-care is an indulgence. Meaningful self-care includes making mindful changes to patterns of thoughts and behaviors that don't contribute to your well-being. So no, it is not an indulgence. Self-care is selfish. When you make time for yourself and get sufficient rest and exercise, you'll feel more energetic and be able to do more for yourself as well as those around you. So self-care is not selfish. Self-care is a one-time experience. Looking after yourself is an ongoing practice in building resilience to face hardships and in preventing burnout. So self-care is a daily practice because I was thinking that my self-care plan in my 20s is not the self-care plan in my 40s. It changes. So we have to be flexible with that plan. Self-care is time consuming. Self-care does not require you to take a huge chunk of time from your busy day. That self-care is not time consuming. The breathing exercise that we did, that was quick. You can run through that. You can say a prayer, you can meditate. So it's not time consuming. It doesn't have to be. So these are some self-care ideas that I found that you may not have thought of. So for instance, asking for help, that's a big one. And what about putting yourself first? That's something as Americans, we really don't do. And what about asking for what you need or setting boundaries or just saying no? And my favorite is forgiving yourself. What if at the end of the day, we forgave ourselves on a daily basis? That would be fantastic self-care. So um, the Association of Accredited Naturopathic Medical College made a self-care bingo. If you have any, if you're short on any ideas, about your self-care, I thought this bingo was awesome. It even says, I showered today, or I brushed or did my hair today, or even I did nothing. That is self-care too. So it also says I took time for myself. I played with an animal, that's always a good one or I listen to music. So it sounds like we're ahead of the game, but these are always extra ideas that you can put toward your self-care plan. I thought it was interesting. It was really nice. So looking after yourself is an ongoing practice in building resilience to face hardships in preventing burnout. Creating a blueprint for your own wellness is actually rewarding yourself and protecting your sanity. So sticking with the blueprint for self-care is not difficult. All it takes is a commitment to support your own well-being over the long term. And you get to choose what your commitment looks like. Your self-care blueprint is such a powerful remedy to feeling great and empowered. Remember, you do not have to feel tired, old, and achy because as Louise Hay of Hay House International says, your body can heal itself. So I wanna thank everyone for coming on the video chat tonight. I hope some of these ideas that I presented to you resonate with you. And if they do, and if you're interested in adding massage therapy or Reiki to your self-care blueprint, 
why don't you contact me for a consult so we can talk about your needs. We can align your needs with my expertise and come up with a personalized massage therapy plan for you. Remember, massage therapy is about a relationship. Like I said, I need to hear what your needs are and I need to align them with my expertise so we can come up with a great plan. I use varying techniques and pressures. Like I said, I use the aromatherapy. We'll, we can do some stretching. And I also use hot towels to improve the circulation during your massage. So again, my name is Crystal Craighead. I'm a licensed massage therapist and Reiki master at Say Yes to Massage in Alexandria, Virginia. Feel free to call me or you can email me at sayyestomassage at gmail.com or you can send me a message or book online at sayyestomassage.com. Thank you, Alice. Thank you everybody for being here tonight. Thank you, Crystal, that, that was wonderful. I, I, uh, I especially felt that the uh, little bingo chart oh, that was like that? absolutely novel. <laughs> and uh, so that was kind of neat. But uh, we're going to go back. Uh, do you want to go back to um, the screen? So I, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll let you, since you're, uh, I put you as host, I'll let you call the people after I start the prayer. And um, uh, because you, you can get the screen. Uh, do, do you see how to do that of, of all the people that, that are in the background too? Participants. Participants. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Christine. Hey, Alice. Yeah, before you do that, um, Crystal, we did have a, a quick question in the chat. Oh, Asking, yeah, please. Yeah. How often Good. should we do, uh, be doing the breathing technique to help keep stress at bay? Mm -hmm. I think everyone loved that breathing technique. So I would yeah. love to hear the answer for that as well. <laughs> and, it, and it's easy and it's a quick go-to. You know, I, as your massage therapist tonight, the resident massage therapist tonight, I always say you should practice it as often as possible. The more you practice it, the more it'll become second nature to you. Mm. So as soon as you feel anxious or overwhelmed, boom, there's my go-to, 478, 478. So when you practice it, it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. If you don't practice it, it's not gonna become second nature. So you have to plan it, mm -hmm. especially in the beginning, because you don't know how to do it and you're not really comfortable with it. So I would say, you know, over the next 21 days to build a habit, mm -hmm. let's okay. start with the 478 method so it'll become second nature to you. Mm -hmm. And how many times would you suggest like each day or is it just um, or just every time a stressful moment comes up? Do you do it like three times, four times? Yeah, I do it three or four times. OK, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Three or four times in a row. Yeah, definitely. But just like any other thing, we're trying to create a blueprint. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to find things that make you happy, things that you're comfortable with doing on a daily basis for your own blueprint. So be flexible. Don't be afraid to do some research or even um, play your, your self-care bingo, mm -hmm. because again, this is an ongoing process. You know, it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't have to take a lot of money. It's an ongoing process that we should be participating in every day. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. Thank and, you. and Crystal, I personally too, just to piggyback on what, uh, Christine said, I loved um, the fact that when you, you when you puncture those myths, especially that self care takes a lot of time, it doesn't. Right. It mm -hmm. absolutely doesn't. And I know in my case, you might have had massage bi week, bi monthly. I do it monthly 
you're my massage therapist. And for me, that is my, um, that's critical to my keeping myself healthy because of my scoliosis right. and the fact that I don't have pain from my scoliosis, you know, because so many people have a tiny bit of a curvature and they're in, in pain. Well, I have an S-shaped spine right. and technically I could be in tons of pain and I'm not. Mm -hmm. But the thing that, that Crystal never ceases to amaze me, I'll come in and I'll come bounding in and, and she says, well, how do you feel? I say, great. I had a good month. And then she starts working on me and I'm going, ouch, ooh, ouch, ooh, ooh, you know, because as she's getting in, she recognizes something that I do to myself. I bury my stuff and it gets buried into my body. So I'm walking around with stuff that I didn't even know I had. Right. That's, that's the incredible thing that I've discovered, um, you know, with you. And, and uh, it's so to me, it's like, I, I know personally, I don't think I could survive without it. You know, that's, that's just my personal opinion. Thank so, anyway. and that's why I, what I say, you never know what you need until you get on the table. Yeah. Cause even after COVID, I hadn't had a massage, what, in a, almost a year. And I'm like, oh, I'm good. I don't really need, I'm good. All right, come on now. I got on the table and I didn't realize how much tension I had all over my body. Mm -hmm. And I'm the resident massage therapist. <laughs> so yeah, so you never, that's what I always say. You never know what you need until you get on the table. But also too, you have, you do acupuncture too. Correct. So you have a great arsenal of self-care tools and you just don't rely on massage. Yeah. Well, and well, I guess that is two, you know, that, that is two things uh, a month. So professional uh, things, plus the, all these wonderful self activities that you presented. Um, right. Cause what is it? It's us taking time for us. Right. Exactly. That's it. You know, us taking time for ourselves and not feeling like we don't deserve it. We don't need it whatever we feel, you know, that, uh, um, anyway, all right. Uh, can we, can, we'll, we'll go with the prayer now okay. and, um, can, can you get the list of participants so you yes. can call on people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have... All right. So I'll begin and then I'll rely on you to call on, on, on the rest. Okay. okay. So very okay. gently close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Dear Mother, Father, God, divine infinite spirit, source of all that is, we thank you so sincerely, so deeply for having a massage therapist in our midst to remind us that we need to take care of ourselves and to put this as part of the arsenal of the things that we can do for ourselves. And we ask for special blessings for the following. My son, my daughter, my daughter-in-law, my newly married daughter, her husband, my grandson, the Jones family, Sweeney family, Zarnopis family, and the Jones Udall family. All those in Afghanistan that got left behind, all those that are in refugee camps around the world, and all those from Afghanistan that are desperately um, in need of a permanent home, relocation, and whatever else that they are in need of. And Crystal. Uh, thank you, Alice. I want to say a prayer for the Craighead and the Hessler family. I also want to pray for all of Afghanistan, 
and that I also want to pray for Mother Earth and everyone here tonight. Thank you. So, uh, Christine, you're next. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask for prayers for my mom, my dad, Sam, John, Okami, myself, my grandmother, um, everyone here tonight, Mother Earth, and everyone in Afghanistan, and just anyone who is facing strife at this moment and needs that extra boost. Thank you. All right, uh, Barb, if you want to unmute yourself. Oh, Barb always has problems, I think, with her um, her computer. Um, the The audio isn't isn't working yet. Okay, so, so she'll uh, type it in. Okay. So Carol is next. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would like prayers for Steph, for her mother especially, for her father and sister and herself. Um, for the M family that they are safely together in their and relocated to their new home safely and happily. For myself and my husband. Um, gosh, I know I'm forgetting somebody important. Um, well, darn. Um, for Mother Earth and all of creation, every living thing. May there be peace on earth and for the all the um, feelings in this country and evolving to happen all around the world where there's polarity between the the people the vaxxed and the not vaxxed and the personal choice may there be peace and truth and transparency so that everyone can learn what they need to learn and choose wisely based on true information unfiltered and available and way more, God, thy love be done. Thank you. Thank you. Christina, you want to unmute yourself? I would just like to pray for my friends, my family, and the entire world um, that everybody experiences um, what they need to experience in this lifetime and that they, um, during this COVID time, feel loved and supported. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, James, do you wanna unmute yourself? Hi, um, thanks for sharing that. Prayers for everyone Hi. here. Um, my family, my brother, my parents, um, my grandfather, my grandmother, and um, everyone in Afghanistan and in the whole world. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Kathy? Do you want to unmute yourself? Um, hi. I, I'm not able to say very much. I want to thank you for presenting you're very calming and I'm taking advantage of the calming. I'm just kind of <laughs> thank you. I'm distressing. Glad to thank you. Thank you also, Alice and the team, whole team. Thank you. Thank you for Bye. that. So uh, Nat, do you want to say something? Yeah, I'd like to pray for my uncle who is recovering from a heart attack. Mm -hmm. um, for my niece who is um, recovering from experiencing um, abuse between her parents and for the family members and people that are grieving the atrocities of residential schools here in Canada. Excellent. Thank you so much. And uh, Ralph, would you like to unmute yourself? Sure. Um, I want to pray for my family and particularly my son for his healing and for finding his ideal path in life and um, also for the planet. So as the vibration increases, um, everything goes as smoothly as possible for everyone and everybody's enveloped with divine grace. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Valerie Craighead, would you like to say something? A prayer for anybody? 
First, I'd like to say thank you, Lord, for the gift of Crystal and the Allens. Then I'd like to pray for the Allens, Johnsons, Lewises, and Craigheads. And I'd like to pray for all of the children in school right now and their, their teachers and administrators and the environment they're in right now. Lord, keep them safe, keep them protected, and keep them healthy. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Bernard Craighead, can you hear me? Do you want to say something? Say a prayer for something? All right, did I miss anyone? All right, I think that's it. Okay. All right, and we thank the angels, the archangels, the ascended masters, the Reiki masters for their involvement in our life. But we especially thank Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Gatumi, Saint Francis, Saint Germain, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, Saint Michael, the Blessed Mother, the Divine Feminine, the Divine Masculine, Mary Magdalene, Moses, Metatron, Melchizedek, Mohammed, and Kuan Yin. We ask that the light of grace come in to us so that we can be walking pillars of light and affect every single person, place, and thing that we encounter, for we know we are truly a little piece of God having a human experience. And we thank Archangel Metatron and his healing angels for the gift of Metatronic healing. And we also thank the great rays for their involvement in our lives, the archangels of the rays, and the ascended masters of the race. We thank all of this in the name, all of these in the name of Jesus the Christ and in the name of I am. And I also would like to include all the little animals, insects, bees, um, whatever are, whoever is affected by the wildfires that are so out of control in the western part of the United States. We thank again all the being, everyone who participated in the healing. We ask that you keep us all in the light of grace and all our intercessions in the light of grace. Amen. Amen. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Crystal. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. It's been it. a long time coming, Alice. <laughs> the what? I said it's been a long time coming. <laughs> yes, it has. And we're going to look forward to the next one. <laughs> yeah. And Crystal, whenever you want to stop recording, you can. Yes. So you know. But thank you so much. This was fabulous. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Christine. So appreciate that. Thank you so much. Right. Everyone yeah. enjoy the rest of your week. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Hey, Alice, do you have a quick moment? I do. I was, thank you for uh, uh, reminding me because I meant to call you earlier and I did not have 